Today on Forbes, fracking hot rocks could revolutionize clean energy if Trump doesn't get in the way. Tim Latimer has always liked digging. He recalls, quote, When I was seven years old, I decided I wanted to dig a hole in the ground and just kept digging for a week. I had seen some TV show about a cool tunnel clubhouse, and I wanted to make my own. Later, as a teenager, he watched in 2008 as the Sandy Creek Energy Station, the last large coal-fired plant built in the United States, broke ground five miles from his home in tiny Riesel, Texas, and grew to tower over the flat rural landscape. He says, quote, That became a very visual reminder. Energy is vital to our lives, but there's positives and negatives with that kind of development. Those twin obsessions, digging deep and creating energy, have taken Latimer, still just 35 years old, and an alumnus of the 2019 Forbes 30 Under 30 list, to the cusp of what could turn out to be either a breakthrough in the quest for zero carbon emitting energy or an expensive pipe dream. As chief executive and co-founder of Houston-based Fervo Energy, Latimer has raised more than $400 million for a plan to liberate practically unlimited geothermal energy generated from the heat of Earth's core, from super hot rocks at least 8,000 feet underground by employing the same fracking techniques used to extract oil and natural gas from shale rock. Fervo's investors include Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, traditional oil and gas producers, Mark Zuckerberg, and Breakthrough Energy Ventures, a climate change-focused venture capital fund organized by Bill Gates and backed by a pack of fellow billionaires, including Jeff Bezos, Michael Bloomberg, Ray Dalio, and Reid Hoffman. Over the next three years, Fervo plans to use a 166-foot-tall drilling rig to punch a total of 80 boreholes, aka wells, in the Escalante Desert, near Milford, Utah. Each of these holes, Fervo has already drilled 20, is about 10 inches in diameter and goes down a mile and a half, then horizontally for nearly another mile. This is tough drilling through solid granite rock that's close to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Once a hole is drilled, high-pressure water mixed with sand is blasted down it to open fractures in the rock. Fervo uses sensors to pinpoint where those fractures have spread and then drills the next well so that its expected fractures intersect with those created by the first. At that point, with a pair of wells ready, Fervo injects cold water down one, which floods into the cracks in the rocks. The water takes the heat out of the rock and becomes steam. That then flows back up through the second well to the surface for use as thermal energy to run a turbine. Each pair of wells creates a closed loop, recycling the cooled and condensed water down into the first well to be reheated. In October, less than four years after leasing the land, Latimer received crucial federal permits to scale Fervo's Utah project, known as Cape Station. There, he aims to produce 2,000 megawatts, or 2 gigawatts, of zero-carbon geothermal power at a cost of, quote, several billion by 2030, he hopes. That's enough for more than 2 million homes. Latimer says that fracked geothermal, quote, is going to be as revolutionary for clean energy as it was for oil and gas. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory figures such hot rocks could generate 12% of the United States' electricity by 2050. It won't be cheap, at least not at first. But Latimer hopes to repeat the plummeting cost curve of solar power, which over the last 15 years has gotten 80% cheaper. It's no surprise that with such big ambitions, Latimer faces lots of risks. One big risk, if President-elect Trump makes good on his campaign pledge to kill green energy subsidies contained in the landmark 2022 Inflation Reduction Act, scrambling the economics of the plan. Latimer insists that Fervo will be all right under Trump so long as any federal policy changes don't put it at a disadvantage relative to other renewable energy sources. For full coverage, check out Christopher Hellman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.